came through the body. The force was unbelievable. It's as if it's not a human that's doing it. Somebody has walked over your grave. Oh God, I can feel him, but I can't look, I'm too scared to look. It's the ghost, it's the girl. Don't you see that? Something more unnerving than you could ever imagine. Question of everything. Haunted. Weeknights at nine on Discovery Civilization. Lighthouses are beacons of safety. But a lighthouse can harbor a darker side. A secret history. A touch of mystery. A glimpse into the unknown or encounter with the unknowable. The United States has hundreds of lighthouses along its coastlines, and at least a few of them offer more than a guiding beacon to mariners lost at sea. Things are not always what they seem, but strange things have been happening in America's lighthouses. A mother searches for her drowned child. A long dead keeper cannot abandon his watch and a ghost of a lighthouse cat still stalks the stairs. At the end of the 19th century, lighthouses were built all along the eastern and western coasts of America, particularly on the rocky, shipwreck-prone shores of New England and Oregon. At the boundary of land and sea, the lighthouse is often at the boundary of the tangible and the intangible. It is no surprise that there are many mysterious tales associated with the lighthouses. At the end of the 19th century, on a remote part of the Oregon coast, a Kena Bay lighthouse was the scene of a mystery. Built in 1871, the lighthouse was only in operation for less than three years, it was replaced by a taller beacon, a mile to the north at Yakina Head. The little beacon on the bay was abandoned and neglected for many years. During that time, a tragedy occurred, and now the Aquina Bay Lighthouse is said to be possessed by a spirit. The stories have been handed down through the generations by sailors, visitors, and lighthouse keepers. Whether it's true or not, we don't know, but we have a lot of versions that indicate that something happened here after the lighthouse was abandoned. Someone disappeared, and it's quite a mystery. The story first appeared in a magazine article in 1899 entitled The Haunted Light. And the story is dark and disturbing. In the late 1800s, 16-year-old Muriel Trevenard disappeared without a trace in broad daylight at the Aquina Bay Lighthouse. Muriel had come with her father, a sea captain, to stay with friends that summer in the tiny seashore town of Aquina Bay. One morning, Muriel and her companions ventured out for a picnic on the cliffs surrounding the lighthouse. Passing the beacon, Muriel was drawn to it as though a voice inside was calling her name but there was no voice. The lighthouse was abandoned. What happened next is completely unknown. Records from that time give us no clue as to Muriel's fate. One thing seems certain. Muriel Travenard disappeared forever that day. Or did she? There are reports that, that her spirit still roams here, and we don't know where she went bodily, what happened to her, but it seems as if it was a tragedy, whatever it was, and perhaps her spirit remains on uh, to solve that mystery. I had heard the story or the legend of Muriel. I had a friend visiting from out of state, and we were just passing through the park looking at the sights. I was driving, and we both kind of glanced up at the lighthouse up um, where the beacon is, and we saw this um, white ephemeral shape just kind of floating by the windows at the top. I told her then the story that it was supposed to be a haunted lighthouse, and um, she confirmed we probably saw the ghost. A trick of light, or a spirit on the roam. Witnesses at Aquina Bay know that they have seen something extraordinary. 
I um, frequently hear stories um, about ghostly experiences that people have had. One of my favorites, actually, was um, a couple that I met uh, here visiting the lighthouse one day told me the story of their daughter's wedding. Uh, they said that um, during the wedding, they had their daughter come down the stairs in her wedding gown, and they took pictures. And that when they got the pictures developed, there was a ghostly image in the photo behind uh, her daughter that looked like a woman. They thought it was Muriel. I was pretty astounded that I actually got to see her. I think I saw a ghost. Over a hundred years ago, something or someone took the life of Muriel Trevenard. Her body was never recovered, and it seems today her spirit is still restless. But Muriel is not the only ghost to haunt a lighthouse in these parts. Just to the north of the Equina Bay Beacon is the lighthouse that replaced it. Equina Head Lighthouse is Oregon's tallest, throwing its light almost 30 kilometers out to sea. Since it was first lit in 1873, rumors have persisted that the lighthouse on Equina Head is also haunted. A keeper in the 1930s wrote, Someone unseen would come in and go up the spiral stairs on certain dark nights. The keeper believed he lived with a ghost in his tower for 22 years, sometimes following close behind the phantom as it wound its way up to the lantern room. He heard it on the stairs almost every night, but never caught a glimpse of it. Since the beacon is now automated, a keeper no longer maintains the light but staff and visitors have reported hearing unexplained sounds in the tower. Most recently, a lighthouse volunteer. I came in this morning by myself. Usually there are two of us. I heard voices, like maybe a man and a woman talking very, very softly. I was just curious, where is that sound coming from? I still don't know. Nothing was there, nothing. Nobody but me and the voices. While some officials try to dispel the ghostly rumors, the townspeople insist they are true. They believe the spirit of an old keeper still rattles around somewhere inside the Aquina Head Tower. I am not going to put myself in the position of saying it is haunted, but it could be. Two lighthouses on the same bay, both beautiful and both haunted by their pasts. Is it merely a coincidence, or are ghosts, like mariners, drawn to the powerful beacons of a lighthouse? What can stir the imagination like a lonely lighthouse perched high on a cliff overlooking the sea? The perfect spot for a good old-fashioned ghost story. I think that people um, love ghost stories, um, and particularly lighthouse ghosts. The isolation and the lonely spots that they're typically in sort of lends itself to ghost stories getting started. Lighthouses are romantic and ghosts are romantic. The romance of lighthouses often lies in the spectacular beauty of their remote locations. Hasita Head is no exception. About a three hour drive from Portland past miles of isolated beaches and a rocky Oregon coast, this remarkable lighthouse is majestic, just like the scenery itself. Hasita Head Lighthouse and Keeper's Quarters perch on top of a wedge of rock jutting out into the Pacific Ocean. Here, it isn't the lighthouse that's haunted, it's the Keeper's Quarters. The house was built in 1894 and has been restored and is now a bed and breakfast. Guests are treated to everything you might expect at an upmarket B&B, but sometimes they get more than they bargained for. 
Over the breakfast table, some have told stories of a strange visitor to their room, a brush with a mysterious ghost known as Rue. Rue's been here a number of years. This is the urban legend. This is folklore at best. Uh, but the, the stories have been passed down just like every other story that, that has come to be a legend. And Rue's very much uh, a part of the history of this facility here. According to the legend, uh, there was a light keeper's wife who uh, lost her only child. Uh, the girl drowned either in the cistern or was lost in the ocean, and uh, the mother was distraught with grief and uh, killed herself. There's actually an unmarked grave out here somewhere for the child. Some have looked, but no one knows for certain where the child is buried. I believe that this area in here uh, is where the gravesite is. Even the young girl's name is unknown. But many here believe both mother and child are an inseparable part of Hasita Head's tragic history. This is not a real old lighthouse. And people tend to think that the older a lighthouse, the more haunted it is. But this, this lighthouse is only about 100 years old. It was built in the 1890s. And it was a very difficult life for the keepers at that time because it was so isolated. It was a good uh, 15, 18 miles by a wagon road to get to any civilization. And so that sets us up for the idea of mortality. It was very hard for children here, and uh, it seems as if some of the early keepers lost some of their children in infancy and early childhood. And this has led to some speculation that maybe there are some spirits roaming the grounds here. There's the history of someone dying, and then there are the experiences with the ghost. And generally speaking, the experiences with the ghost uphold the historical background very well. Historians have tried to match up the folklore around the ghostly sightings with the early records from the lighthouse. I think the legend goes back to the tenure of Frank and Jenny DeRoy. He came here in the late 1890s as an assistant keeper and then went on to become the principal keeper. And they were here a very long time. Uh, she came as a young woman. She probably uh, lost a child during that time. So I think that it may be her that uh, people think they're seeing here. I don't get wrapped up in trying to prove or disprove of the ghost stories. Uh, and I personally, when something happens, I'm trying to figure out ways that uh, perhaps uh, I can explain these odd uh, circumstances. And I've come to uh, realize that there's things that happen here that I just simply can't explain. And uh, that mystery is OK with me. Many visitors have strange tales to tell, and they weren't all believers to begin with. The interesting thing, this is the, the part that really gets me, is that the people who have the most intense experiences with the ghost were the people who came in skeptic at first. Like myself, they came in disbelieving that ghosts were possible. Hasita Head is well known for the ghost. Uh, other people that have come in don't believe in it, and I'm sure that they leave still not believing in it. I don't think she shows up for everybody. I think that that's one of the things that's very particular about the spirit world is it will only hit you when you're least expecting it. I've never seen a, an apparition or anything conventionally ghostly, uh, but there are certain times when I'll be sitting somewhere and I have, there's, there's no choice. You have to look. We've had guests who um, have had her come sit on the bed. Um, they'll be sitting on the side of the bed and all of a sudden there's a, a, an impression beside them on the bed. And um, some people have uh, enjoyed that. Others have come streaming downstairs. What's going on? So definitely has a spirit here. I I've caught glimpses of her out of the corner of my eye. I've never faced her face on, but I I've, I've felt her in the room. As I saw her, I would have swore that she was human. I would put her at the very turn of the century, the early 1900s, and I have seen her. I turned to the gentleman behind me, and he said, did you see that? And I went, thank you, Lord, someone else saw her. She was bending over, fluffing the pillows on the bed, and she was dressed in the black, All it was an all-black outfit, though. She seems to be searching for something, and possibly it's, it's the child she lost. 
or possibly the child's grave. Rue's search keeps leading back to the house where she may have once lived. She has been seen all over the house. One of my worst experiences was in the attic, and I didn't know where the light switch was at this point. I was uh, a new employee here, and I had to go up there. It was enough to make me gather my cool and walk all the way across the attic with my lighter out. You can see 15 feet across the room, and on the opposite wall was a face. And when I got there, it wasn't a face any longer. It was just the wall. There was nothing there. But I swear, that first moment I saw it, there was a clear as day face staring at me. The best known sighting of her um, came when there was a workman up in the attic doing some repairs, and he was at a window. This is probably where it happened in the attic, uh, perhaps at this window. In contrast to the disturbing encounters in the attic, most residents, past and present, enjoy memories of Rue as a friendly spirit, a welcome companion in the house. I know that she is here. She, her presence is definitely here. It really didn't ever bother me. It almost made me, I don't know, it was almost a comforting feeling at times. I'd be sitting in a room, I could feel just a slight breeze and sort of a chill would go down my back and I knew that she was there. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. I feel very comfortable with it. Whatever the spirit is, it really appreciates the fact that there's things going on here. It could definitely be a very spooky and decrepit old place if it was allowed to be. I haven't seen uh, Rue in broad daylight uh, floating towards me, which seems to be the, you know, the proof that everybody wants. But I have seen a lot of things out of the corner of my eyes, and uh, I've, I've experienced strange things here in the house as well. Uh, it's for the best that I haven't seen her because I have to live here. The western coast of the United States has been shaped by the forces of the Pacific Ocean. In Oregon, in at least two lighthouses and one lightkeeper's home, people have felt the presence of other forces that no one can adequately explain. But ghostly sightings are not limited to the west coast. On the other side of America, on the Atlantic coast, the state of Maine has the highest concentration of lighthouses in the United States. But one lighthouse stands out for its dramatic location and its ghostly legends. There are a lot of stories here that are unexplainable. I definitely say Owl's Head is one of Maine's haunted lighthouses. To find the pine-covered cliffs of Owl's Head, journey up the Atlantic coast, an hour north of Portland, Maine, straight through the heart of lobster country. On your way, plenty of lighthouses perch on the rocky shore. This is Curtis Island Lighthouse in Camden. The island is home to a wildlife refuge and bird sanctuary, but it's no refuge for ghosts. This is Marshall Point Lighthouse. The story around this town is that a murdered teenage boy is seeking revenge and is on the prowl for his assailant. But this particular ghost is not drawn to the lighthouse. As we get closer to Owl's Head, we see Breakwater Lighthouse. At its doorstep, a mile of granite blocks discourages most visitors. Finally, a beacon comes into view. Owl's Head is home to one of Maine's most mysterious lighthouses. 
Even its name remains a mystery. Perhaps early explorers imagined the eyes and beak of an owl on the rocky outcroppings. Whatever they saw is not evident today. What is apparent, however, is that someone has been tending the lighthouse when no one is supposed to be there. Over the years, I've had a lot of keepers tell me stories about Owl's Head. And one of them is, of course, the mystery of the footprints. It's been told to me many, many times over that mysterious footprints appear, especially after a light rain. And the mystery is they only go one direction. They come up the ramp, they go up the stairs, and they get to the tower. And then if you continue on, you will find that the brass has been cleaned and the lens has been cleaned. Now that is a mystery. To me, it is possible that the presence of a lighthouse keeper could still be uh, in some form still present at a lighthouse after his death uh, because they were so uh, emotionally tied in with those places. I don't know the explanation, but it's, it's not that much of a leap of imagination to me to think that in some form they would uh, hang around to take care of that light. These keepers that lived in this period of history, they were just workers. They didn't want anything to ever go wrong with the lighthouse. A man that was dedicated knew that if anything fouled up with equipment or anything fouled up with his light, that a disaster could occur. Sometimes when they die, their spirit stays behind. And I think there's a keeper at Owl's Head. I would uh, have an open mind on that subject. I uh, am cautiously uh, open-minded <laughs> on the idea of a, a keeper's spirit still uh, existing at, at a lighthouse like this. If the spirit of a dead lighthouse keeper shows up at Al's head on occasion, no one seems surprised. But a family who once lived in the keeper's quarters was more than a little startled at finding a ghost in their child's bedroom. I'm very fascinated by uh, the story of uh, Debbie Graham and her husband, uh, Gerard, who were here in the 80s, and uh, they had a small daughter who uh, experienced uh, some unusual things. We really never felt anything until we were started, you know, started paying attention to my younger child. She'd wake up in the middle of the night, and she would meet her dad at the top of the stairs, and she'd tell her daddy to turn on the foghorn. How would a two-year-old know to come and tell her daddy to turn on the foghorn? The Grahams believed that their daughter was being visited by the spirit world. It really didn't take that long for us to figure out, like, what the heck's going on here, you know? I mean, we've got something in here that's telling her what to do. She always felt the presence of him, and that was in the room that was haunted. Who is this? And that's what I always wanted to know. Who could this be? Why else would a ghost be in that lighthouse if he wasn't a keeper? Maybe this is not surprising. It is often children who are most open to the paranormal. She was connected. She was there. She was there with the spirit. It was, it was Claire, and, Claire and the ghost. There's been many, many strange things that go on in the house. So I would say that if a little girl has lived in that house, she senses the keeper. It could be his footprints that go up the ramp and up to the tower. He may be the one who's cleaning the brass and who's also cleaning the lens. I do not know what the explanation is for these uh, events at Owl's Head Light, but there, seem to be, there seems to be a consistency with several of the people who have lived there in the house have experienced very similar events. If I'm in my room listening to the ocean and I'll just be doing my thing, I always feel like there's somebody there. Sometimes you have a feeling like there's a presence watching over you, and I hate to use the word haunted. I wouldn't say haunted, because it's a scary word, but I would say that there are spirits there or there's things happening there that are more than just coincidence. Something is going on. Maybe someday we'll understand it all. A small girl communicating with a keeper's ghost. Brass fixtures and a lens that clean themselves. Footsteps left in the night. The chilling North Atlantic coast has seen its share of the unexplained. And her lighthouses keep the legends alive.
No one can say when this beacon was first suspected of being a haunted lighthouse. A little further to the north of Owl's Head, Prospect Harbour is remote, even by main standards. About five hours from the city of Boston, it is nestled in the craggy sea coast, just a few miles from the Canadian border. First lit in 1891, Prospect Harbour Lighthouse was established to help a large fleet of fishing boats navigate through the harbour. Today, the keeper's quarters are used as a recreational facility for United States Navy personnel. They call it Gull Cottage. And for anyone who wants to be alone, this is the place. People come a long way for the privacy. Unexpected guests almost never drop by, but sometimes strange visitors make an appearance. I would agree to speculate that the, the, the uh, spirit of the last lightkeeper probably exists here. If somebody does happen to hear something or see something that maybe happens without any rational, immediate explanation, don't rule it out. Many believe that the last keeper, Captain Salty, still keeps a watchful eye over his lighthouse. He's still going up at the light whatever hour he needs to to check on something. He's still checking downstairs, doing you know whatever's involved and keeping that light on and keeping track of the of this house, he's doing it. There's not some, the spirit of some disgruntled individual who's, who's hanging out here, who's just waiting to do whatever. He, he very much enjoyed his job. And he sees no, he probably, he may in fact see no reason to stop. He's just keeping track of the light, straight up. He's taking care of this place. He's, uh, people hear things, or they, they see things moving. That's who I would attribute it to. Dawn Perry manages Gull Cottage she hears few complaints, but sometimes guests offer comments or ask questions like, what exactly is going on around here? I hear a lot of our guests comment about they heard a door closing and it sounded like the closet door in the guest room or the door to the guest room. Lights coming on after they've turned all the lights off and gone to bed, which I don't doubt that they've heard and seen these things. They're very convincing to me when they describe it. We keep journals available to our guests um, here at the cottage for them to write their thoughts and their um, experiences down, not just about the hauntings, but just in general. Captain Salty visited us last night, moving two of the statues and closing doors. You could feel his presence in the air. One sign of Captain Salty's presence is found here. He will sometimes take possession of these hand-carved wooden statues. Peering out to sea from an upstairs window, they seem to have a mind of their own. They do move. I know that. Nobody seems to know when they were placed there or who carved them. I tried to find that out. They'll be looking straight ahead or out toward the ocean. Then when you wake up in the morning, they'll be turned, each one, just the same amount of degrees, and they'll be looking toward shore. Janet Chanel, herself a descendant of a Prospect Harbor lighthouse keeper, was once a guest here, sharing the cottage with a friend. She said, every time we come, we line the statues back up, just in case somebody has touched them. And she said, uh, they will move. When we wake up in the morning, they will move. And if a spirit that is restless in the universe plays with the figures, that's okay with me. Not ruling that out. Most people who have spent the night at Gull Cottage feel a very strong atmosphere in the house. Those people are so attached. They've given their lives to this place. It's what they were. They lived here. They worked here. It was everything. So, you know, perhaps their spirits still do linger here. It may be hard for someone to let go of everything that they knew. And for these people, there weren't there weren't summer homes and vacations. This was it. They lived and worked and died at the, at the lighthouse. I would like to believe that there, are, that there are ghosts, that they exist. Sure. It's a very romantic and, and nostalgic idea to think that it's not over when it's over, that you can come back and, and see things and see people. Guests here may always wonder who shares their cottage, who rattles around the bedrooms, and who moves the wooden carvings. 
If I were a ghost, this is a place I would pick. <laughs> the Atlantic coast of Maine is harsh and lonely. It has few inhabitants. Just the kind of place you might expect to find a ghost. But further south, far from the cold water, lobsters and solitude of Maine, we find Florida's panhandle region on the Gulf of Mexico. Pensacola is a busy beach town. It's also the home of the US Navy's precision flight squadron, the Blue Angels, and one of the world's largest aviation museums. Pensacola has a tall, picture-perfect lighthouse. It appears normal in every respect. But in fact, it may be one of America's most haunted lighthouses. It's a real fine line between your imagination playing with you versus what is really happening. If we got a spirit or two spirits here, you know, apparently they're, they're uh, benign. You know, they're not harmful. Nobody's ever been harmed. Pensacola Lighthouse has stood on duty for nearly 150 years, shining its beam 40 kilometers out to sea. Although the tower rises over a Navy base, it's managed by the United States Coast Guard which maintains the building while trying to rebuff persistent rumors that the lighthouse is haunted. Everybody likes to think that, uh, you know, just because it's as old as it is, it's been through as much history as it has, there's, there's, there's bound to be ghosts here. We have lots of people who believe very strongly that it is haunted. We have other people who are less, less believers and more skeptical. Local residents like to tell the story of an incident that took place one hot summer night in the late 1800s. A tragedy that might be long forgotten, but for a grim reminder left behind. All I can do is tell you what my impressions were, and I do know that there was, there was life and death in that room. Apparently it was an argument that uh, occurred between a lighthouse keeper and uh, his wife. She just took a knife to him, and uh, from what I understand, it was a murder. This was probably not the first time he had attacked her. Yes, it was murder, but it was, I would call it self-defense. That's where the stain came from on the floor. As long as this house is standing, as long as that floor is in there, that, that stain's gonna be there. I know they've tried to uh, scrub it. It always comes back. It comes back in the same spot. There's definitely a, an evil, bad feeling in that particular room. An evil, bad feeling, along with some century-old blood seem to have permanently stained the mood here, as well as the bedroom floor. And it marks the beginning of a series of very strange recent events. There's definitely a presence here that uh, makes me nervous. January in this part of Florida can mean dark nights and freezing temperatures. A few winters ago, when a deep freeze gripped Pensacola, a plumber from the nearby Navy base scouted for frozen pipes. He is not the kind of man given to fanciful imagining, but he is sure he has talked with a ghost. I made about four circles around the lighthouse here, and uh, every, every time I'd stop to look for the leak, I could feel so in here somebody walking behind me. I reached down, shut the valve off. I heard something on the front steps by the front door, and I looked up, and I thought it was the other gentleman working with me out here. And I says, Ed, I says, are you done yet? All of a sudden, I noticed it wasn't Ed. When I asked him, was he done yet? His response was, I'll never be done. Folks out there can believe what you want to, <laughs> but uh, I, I've seen the real deal. <laughs> I know that this place has spirits. I can only say that now because it had to happen to me personally in order for me to believe it. 
It was the second Halloween that we had been conducting haunted lighthouse climbs. And um, I was standing right here in my witch's costume. Before I would start them up these stairs, I would say something like, uh, Mr. Lighthouse Keeper, don't scare these people. Um, they're just here to see the lighthouse and then they're gone. And all of a sudden I feel on the back of my right elbow, I got three distinct taps. And of course I turned to think maybe that somebody was there that needed my assistance, but there was nobody there. So I was touched by the ghost. But you don't need to be touched by a ghost to feel its cold chill. Early one evening, a startled young girl caught the attention of a veteran lighthouse volunteer. She and her family had seen an image of a lady in white up on the second catwalk of the lighthouse. The volunteer explained the lighthouse was locked and empty. But the young girl insisted there was someone on the tower. She seemed to think right away that it was a ghost that they had seen. Finally, when I heard footsteps myself when I was here alone, I became convinced that we really did have ghosts. On yet another night, the beacon unexpectedly went dark. An emergency call summoned the man in charge, accompanied by his wife. That night, the light was reported extinguished. We got the call and we came back. And when we came up to the door, she said we had locked somebody in. It was a man, uh, like an older man's voice, uh, a gruff voice. I said, no, there's nobody locked in there that I know of. The closer we got, the louder it was, yet my husband couldn't hear it. My main goal was just getting the light back on so the mariners could still steer by it. I said, well, there is somebody inside. They are frustrated. I can hear them, and they're not happy. We opened the door. And turned on the light and everything went silent again for her. I walked in and was just chilled, head to toe. I said, no, there's nobody, there's nobody in there. He found nothing, absolutely nothing. Sometimes I'm a Downey Thomas and I've always, I've heard like everybody else that I've heard bumps and I've heard noises, you know, and sometimes maybe uh, things I might have thought were footsteps. Things that just can't be explained. You can't put a finger on it and I have to physically see it in front of me. To believe it but uh, still you just can't shake that feeling sometimes you know, it's, it's very strange what I feel at this lighthouse it's as if somebody's right behind me but there's nobody there it's kind of like somebody's whispering somebody's chattering but they're not there <laughs> you know it might be a touch it might be a tug on your clothes just there's all these subtle little things but nothing concrete you know Nothing concrete, but if you have a sensitive disposition, you may believe you have felt a ghost. Pensacola is an attractive beach resort with a strong military presence, not the remote, windswept lighthouse setting one would imagine sighting ghosts. But spirits are everywhere, especially when the circumstances surrounding their deaths involve murder. Travel due north from Pensacola, about 2,000 kilometers, and you'll encounter another large body of water. Lake Erie is one of the great lakes in the northern central part of the United States, across from Canada. Here you will find the lighthouse at Fairport Harbor, Ohio. These waters can be as rough as the sea, and the need for lighthouses along the Great Lake shores was once considered equally important. It seems that no matter where they were built, there will always be lighthouse stories. I think this building is very old, and there's a lot of history here. If you start thinking back to all of the history and you know, the people that lived here and what they did, um, you know, it, that might be a reason why you feel a little bit more of a presence. This is kind of like a castle like in Europe, you know, an old castle with all the history behind it. We have our lighthouses. One of the ghosts at Fairport Harbor Lighthouse is not what you might expect. Prowling around this light station is one of the most unusual spirits you'll encounter anywhere. Do I believe in ghosts? Well, there are a lot of things that happen that are unexplained at the lighthouse, so it could be. One of the strange things that happened at this lighthouse 
was the discovery of a body. We were running some plumbing over to, uh, to the air conditioning system, crawled back in about three-fourths of the way in there. It was dark, you know, it was uh, a place that nobody had been for maybe 150 years. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was unusually frightening. I noticed something on the left side of my head. I turned just slightly to see what it was, and there staring at me in my face was the face of a cat. It looked to me as if it was there for at least 100 years. It, it, was, it was very old. The teeth were still intact. Its ears were up. Uh, it was indeed a cat. It's a bit, you know, spooky. The discovery of the cat's body was initially a shock, but it made sense of some of the strange noises and sightings around the lighthouse. What's going on here? Here's a mummified cat, and, you know, there's a story of a ghost cat that has circulated for so long, and needless to say, it really scared me. The cat had been haunting the lighthouse for many years, but was there another spirit in the building? Ghosts come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and even species. Fairport Harbor Lighthouse appears to have spirits of every sort. About 20 years ago, the lighthouse took on a new curator. When Pamela Brent moved in, what she didn't know was that part of her job was to live with the unexpected. I moved in with my husband and two sons in 1987. And our basic job was to take care of the grounds and handle tours here at the, at the museum. Nobody else really ever talked about it, so there wasn't like a feeling of there was a ghost here. There wasn't anything preconceived to me that there were going to be ghosts here in any way, shape, or form. I just did not expect it. It was about a year uh, before I actually saw the cat itself. Just kind of gray and more the tail in the rear end, and it just kind of dashed in front of me, and I just kind of stopped for a minute. That okay, maybe it was just something I'd, you know, I'm tired or something like that. I was coming from the boys' room and heading towards the living room, coming around the corner, and I saw the cat just right about there. Just knowing I didn't have an animal here, I was like, no, I can't be seeing this. Considering the age of the building, there had to have been spirit somehow attached to the building. And in this case, it was a cat. In its 200-year history, the longest-serving lighthouse keeper at Fairport Harbor Lighthouse was Captain Joseph Babcock. His tenure was plagued by hardship. Just months after he was appointed, Babcock's five-year-old son, Robbie, died in the lighthouse. Then his wife fell ill. While she was bedridden, he gave her several cats. And just before she died, her favorite one disappeared, perhaps into the basement. And we think that might have been one of Mrs. Babcock's cats. And we don't know if that was one of the ghosts that has haunted our uh, dwelling for the past must be 50 years at least. When they did find the mummified cat, it was, it was really quite a surprise, but it was kind of nice for me to realize that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't making this up in my mind that something had really been there. And we finally had physical proof of it too. And if the bizarre cat story isn't ghostly enough for Fairport Harbor, another presence seems to be lurking in the lighthouse, making itself known in a downstairs hallway. Before the cat, Little Robbie Babcock died here as well. The only time I ever had forebodings and feelings was downstairs. The spirit that was downstairs, and he seemed to be very angry, whoever it was. You could feel anger down in the lower northeast corner. It could have been the child. There was a young boy who had died here at the home. He was the son of one of the, the last lighthouse keepers, and he died, we believe, of influenza. Whether they believe in ghosts or not, Everyone believes there is a strange atmosphere in this lighthouse. 
it's a little creepy here at night. It's very quiet. Um, you think of all the history and, um, you know, what's around you, the, the lighthouse, and um, you just get this feeling. People have told me that at times when they're in here, they um, have an eerie feeling. Eerie is a word that people use a lot. Right in that hallway right there, it was just this eerie, creepy feeling. I don't even know how to describe what I was feeling. It just was just eerie. When I turned the corner, it was just, it just came all of a sudden. It feels like something passes through you almost. I can't tell you whether it's haunted or not because I have never seen a ghost personally. There are people that say that they have. Many times when I've been in there, I've heard noises and uh, I'm not sure exactly what, what they're from. I really wanted to get out of the lighthouse. I'm very convinced it was a ghost. Definitely it was a ghost. Is this place haunted? You can draw your own conclusions. There is something about a lighthouse that gives us hope, that gives us comfort. A ray of light across the water that leads to safe harbors. Yet lighthouses are lonely, and the people who live in them are removed from the comforts of a town. Perhaps their remoteness makes them susceptible to myth. Or just maybe they are the perfect places in America to be a ghost.